thank you for joining us this week. I've got an exciting show lined up for you. Before we get going, let's say us a quick prayer. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to be in front of these great people once again. I thank you for all the blessings of the great outdoors and for making us stewards. Lord, please guide us to be better stewards, to, to serve you through the outdoors. No matter what, we give you the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this week I've got a show where we teach you how to trap, skin, butcher, and cook beaver. That's right, beaver. The first thing you need to know about beaver trapping is you got to get your mind in the right set. You got to think like a beaver. You got to act like a beaver. You got to look like a beaver. Step one to beaver trapping is finding fresh sign. You need to go out to the property that you have permission to trap at. You need to start scouting and looking for stuff just like this right here. That is fresh beaver sign. Also look for sticks like this all over and in the water that have been chewed on. That's the area that the beaver are living around and that's the area that now you need to go to step two. Step two, finding the beaver slide. Beaver slide? Whee! No Bubba, like this. Well step two is finding where the beaver are coming out of the body of the water up onto the land to do their chewing. And they call those a beaver slide. Real easy to find. They're gonna be about 15 to 18 inches wide. They're going to generally have marks where their back feet have pushed them up. And you're gonna have belly marks where they've actually slid down back into the water. If you find real fresh sign, you're gonna find wet, damp mud. If you find that, you need to set up on that fresh sign immediately. That means that those beaver are in that area that night or that morning and they are up on that slide. Well now you found your fresh sign, you found your fresh slide, now you gotta set a trap. There are many options for beaver trapping. One of them is a 220 conner bear. Depending on the size of the beaver, you can put this in the slide up off the ground a few inches and I'll show you here how to do that and you can get them this way while they come up the slide or come down the slide. Another way to do it is also to set at the bottom of the slide a trap, a big enough trap to snap on their rear foot on a drowner set that pulls them out in deep water and then they drown. However, probably the most efficient way to trap a beaver is with the good old snare. 90% of the beaver I trap out here are with the snare. Let me show you how we set a beaver snare. Well, here we are down on the slide. One thing you want to make sure when you're on a slide in the steep ditch, make sure you don't fall back down in. Okay, on, on all your beaver snares, you need to make sure you have a swivel at the end. I like to use a cable stake to secure them in the ground on a quick link. And I use a more heavier duty quick links just because I don't want any problems. This way, if you have a beaver that ruins the snare, real easy to, to change it out. So basically with the snare, you're going to have your snare, the cable, your cam lock, which I love for beaver cam lock work excellent because they're easy to get them out of. And you're going to have your little piece of clear rubber plastic tubing that holds the snare up. You're going to find where the beaver is sliding down. Come down about two feet, what I like to do. I use either old clothes hangers or when I'm out beaver trapping, I don't like to put much metal out here. So you want to make your loop about eight inches across. Too much bigger and you're going to catch them by the rear foot or the rear hips and that can ruin the fur. So you find the center of the trail, put it down in there, shove it down in the ground and boom. Beaver comes down, beaver comes up, head will be up off the ground a few inches and this will be off the ground a few inches. Hit the snare, pull, and guess what? You've got yourself a beaver. So in this segment, we're gonna show you how to skin and butcher the beaver. And in a round skin, you're gonna cut straight down the animal. You're gonna wring every leg, make a slit, and then slowly peel it away. Now, if you're gonna keep the meat, you're gonna to have to follow a few other steps. One of the first things I wanna warn you, if you trap beaver, they usually have 
fleas year round. But generally, when you get skin in them, you'll see fleas. So you want to wear something that's got a tight bottom, as you can take this off and leave it outside or shake it off, okay? First thing you're going to want to do is have two different set of knives. One for butchering, if you're going to butcher it, and two for skinning. So I get around, I like to do the ringing first. Once I've wrung the beaver, I like to go ahead and just cut the legs off, the feet, I mean. Okay, so the next step, you're going to want to wring the tail also. So I'll flip this around here, and we'll show you. Same thing, come to the base of the tail. Just cut all the way around it. Now that will just peel right off. Guys, save these. There's lots of things you can do with them. Jawline, come right in here underneath the gum. You cut all the way back, right down the center. You don't really want to puncture this, so be very careful here. Coming up through. So the idea here is around this gland to be very careful. So. With this in mind, if you're going to butcher, you don't want to get anywhere near the meat with the knives you're butchering with. So, that's why we keep one set of knives for butchering, one set of knives for skin. So come in here and just do your normal skin. Just go real slow and peel this back. You don't want to nick the fur. So here we go, we're at the castor gland. Now we gotta be very careful with this. If you feel it, it's kinda like the sack, the milk sack on a deer. You just wanna come in here, peel this back away from the meat. vent tube there and then peel it out pull it away so now we're ready to flip it over we've got it all skinned out down through here I'm gonna flip it over I'm gonna show you how we skin it from here basically all we're gonna do is this got shot on this side you're just gonna continually we'll flip it this way skin this animal basically right on back over the back So, it's a beautiful hide, it's big, and that was a 33 pounder is all. I like to fold them in half, and then just roll them up, and then stick them in a bag, because we'll have to put this up later, but we need to freeze that, make sure we kill any more of the uh, fleas that are on it, or ticks that might be on it. So as I said, if we're going to eat this thing, we want to make sure that we don't touch anywhere that caster was at. So you want to come in here. It's just like taking off a deer back leg. Come in here and cut the back here. Cut around. You'll see. You'll you'll see where all the meat is around here. Cut through here. Cut down. Pick it up. Cut down along the tail. Cut down them. These, unfortunately, because we're going to take the back straps off of this also. Same way, just continue on cutting. There's some bloodshot in here we're going to have to cut out, but. See how you hit that socket and it just breaks it loose. Same way on the front shoulders. Come in here and you can see the shoulder blade. Powerful little animals, man, I'll tell you, they're, they're something.
Okay, now we want to get the back straps. Not a lot of meat on them, but there is meat there in the back strap. Just come right down like a deer. Cut down right next to each side. He's going to follow the spine down. Come in here and peel that away. You'll see just like a deer, this would just pull right away and you'll have a back strap. Well up next we're going to show you how to properly prepare and cook the beaver. Once you have the beaver quartered up and butchered, you're going to want to put it into a big pan that you can fill with water. What I like to do is rinse it, fill it with water, and then salt, and then let it soak overnight in the refrigerator just to allow all the blood to drain out of it. Next, you're going to drain it and put it out here like we have it now. Now, with any wild game, we're going to want to go through and double check that there's not any extra fat or sinew or any silver or connective tissue on this. So, let's get working on that now. You just want to come in here and you're going to want to take off some of this connective tissue just because it takes it longer to break down and any fat, you don't want any of that in there. Once again, I'm going to use the crock pot. I, I love cooking wild game in crock pot because a lot of wild game takes a while to break down. This is going to take five hours to cook. So, before you ever put anything in the crock pot, or at least I do, <laughs> I like to brown it. So, before you brown something, you know you're going to have to have a little bit of flour and just coat your. your Whatever kind of meat you're doing, whether it's uh, wild game, deer meat, whatever, just give it a light coating. Browning just kind of sears the meat and then it helps it helps all the juices stay in it while you're cooking it in the crock pot. Now we've got all the meat brown, we're getting ready to load it up. As always, I'm going to load in the biggest pieces first. Try to layer these in so they all break cook evenly. That back strap up on top. As you can see, it's a lot of meat to a beaver here. And that's half of it. And this was a 46 pound beaver, if I remember right. All right. Chop up one onion. Dump it in. I love these. Pamper Chef, they have such great products. They're quality and, and so usable. It just slides everything in, chop them up drop them. Now, you're always going to need to put some seasoning in. I like a little bit of salt, about a tablespoon of salt. Now, what I like to put in, because I told you I'm kind of making it a Tex-Mex, is I like to put in chili powder, and that is three tablespoons of chili powder, yeah, that's a lot, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. I just sprinkle that over it evenly. Okay, now you're always going to want to put some liquid in. So myself, this is my homemade salsa. I'm going to dump the entire container over it. And because it might get a little down, I'm going to pour about a half a cup of water with that too. You want to make sure that everything gets covered up in here and, and moisture is touching it. It all looks good. Now, we're going to put that lid on, we've got it on high, we're going to let it cook for four hours and we're going to come back and check it. Well, it's been five hours, I need to get in here and we need to check it. We're probably going to need to pull this stuff out and take the meat off the bone. Mmm, you know, I like that little touch of cinnamon in there. You don't have to put that in there, but basically, a recipe, there's a base to it. The beaver. Add whatever you want. This stuff tastes just like a pot roast. So you can do whatever you want to it. You want to make Tex-Mex? You want to make a pot roast? You want to... I don't care what you do with it. Just get out and try this. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Well, 
let it drain off a little bit here. Oh, it's already falling off the bone, everybody. I'm telling you this, you can tell when meat's been cooked for a while because how far it's fallen off the bone. It's kind of like barbecue. Oh, look at that, everybody. It's just falling off the... <laughs> I'm going to take this off the bone, and then we're going to add it back in. Add a roux, mix it up, because I'm going to make like a Tex-Mex so we can put on burritos. But like I said, you can do whatever you want. If you want to put this just like this and add potatoes and carrots about an hour and a half, two hours out, you know, before the end, and at the third hour, go for it. It makes an excellent pot roast. This is the way I like to do things. We like to eat that Tex-Mex style food. I'm telling you, look at this, fall off the bone. You cannot tell the difference between pot roast and beaver. It is that good. It takes a little extra time to cook them, but once you do, you're going to realize, wow, there's a whole area that you're missing that you can add stuff to your freezer, add a variety, and get more organic food for your family. Well, thank you for joining us this week. I hope you found the show interesting and educational. You know, trapping is a way that we can extend our time in the outdoors, learn more about the properties we hunt, and become better hunters. Another advantage you'll have in trapping is that you're building relationships with landowners. Landowners and farmers have problems with nuisance animals, whether they're destroying crops, their woods, their ponds, their livestock, possibly just being nuisances around their barn and their homes. By helping them control their populations of these, you're building trust and you're building a relationship with that landowner. Well, as always, take care, be safe, you know most of all, have fun. God bless and we hope to see you next week. I need to get working on that show.